Okay, good morning, folks, and welcome to Swing Trading Today. This is Bob Desmond, and we wake up to news that the president has tacked on or will tack on tariffs onto Mexico if they do not stop illegal immigration. Now, while I think it's a worthy reason to slap on tariffs, because by not doing so, Mexico taxes the United States population and has been doing so for decades. It's about time. The problem for business, in the short run anyway, is they've had little lead time on this announcement to make plans. So uh, we're looking at a June 10th deadline, I believe, on $350 billion worth of products. And the S&P futures are not taking this well. We are down at current over, or nearly, I should say, 1.25% on the morning. And we are melting away. Uh, yesterday, we did break out and above this upper band of resistance. And yet again, we failed to hold it. This is why I said yesterday morning on Swing Trading Today, it's not enough for us to break out and close above a support level on the S&P 500. What we need to see our new price highs. What do I mean? What I mean is that this morning we should see the price of the S&P trading above this prior high here, not breaking back down below a support level. This was a bull trap. And if people were out there yesterday betting that they saw a bottom on the S&P 500, they're very, very wrong about that, obviously. Now, we did do some buying yesterday. We bought some extreme oversold stocks, which had unsustainable RSI. So going into the morning, I view this as an opportunity to buy more shares. We also booked profits on Bitcoin. I'll go to that chart in a moment. We'll talk about it then. Let's go over to the NASDAQ, see how that's faring. And we did buy more gold mining stocks yesterday. And gold is on a tear this morning. And we'll take a look at that chart. And this all goes back to our core strategy. Wow, the NASDAQ is getting pounded. This is the NASDAQ 100. So these are the big caps. These are triple Qs. And we are down over 1.5% on the morning. Now we are trading at the lows of the session. This is not setting up to be a good day. Let's take a look at the US dollar. These are all four hour charts, folks. Now the dollar, what I think is happening here is that we're getting a double top put in because you're seeing tweezer action as noted by these topping tails. That's a sign of selling above or sellers above. And we are putting in a low versus the prior high, which was at 98.5. Point three seven. Now, that's all conversation until such time as we break below this support level here at 97 spot 546. If we break down below that support level, uh, we're going a lot lower in the U.S. dollar because that will be a confirmation breakdown on the dollar. Now, what's going to do well? It's already begun. Gold. Ripping this morning. We ripped yesterday, we're ripping yet again today. We're up this morning over three quarters of a percentage point back above the 1300 level. As I've been discussing with members for a while now, the 1310 level is paramount. That is true support. Everybody's using 1300. It's not the critical support level everybody is chalking it up to be. 1310 is the critical support resistance level. And that's what we'll be watching. We bought more gold miners yesterday. We'll continue to buy on strength. Gold relative to its third standard devi deviation Bollinger Band is a bit extended here. So I would wait for a pullback and ideally a close above 1310 before getting aggressive. Taking a look at silver, of which we are long and looking to add more. Uh, we broke out and above resistance yesterday. We're consolidating. We're flagging out, and we are looking for a break above this resistance level here. And ideally, a break above this prior high on price. 
and then we could comfortably get long of silver or add to our position, I should say. Now, taking a look at crude oil, it is down this morning, it's absolutely pummeled this morning. Finding support, the problem with oil is this, is that it's so weak. We flashed a bullish reversal bar on a daily basis not too long ago. And I warned members about uh, the energy sector and to avoid. We flashed a bullish, this is a daily chart. We flashed a bullish reversal bar on the 24th, pardon my voice. And then the following day, we flashed a bearish key reversal. Then on the 29th, we undercut this prior low here. And ever since, the algos just moved in and just leaned into the short side on oil. So I would avoid this sector. We may bounce here. I think we're going lower, though. Now, moving on to Bitcoin in a four-hour chart. We had to book profits here yesterday for a couple of reasons and I'll, I'll probably do a video on this trade of bitcoin we did well over 100 percent on this trade we bought back in february when we first started seeing stabilization of bitcoin uh, we held through the rally and you could see here that we busted through the upper band of the third standard deviation bollinger band on the 26th, which is fine. You can consolidate sideways and then break out, which is exactly what we did, in fact. However, we couldn't close above it, and we were rejected with a bearish key reversal yesterday on this four-hour bar, and we subsequently fell apart. Now, we're down 3.22% this morning. I think that we're probably going to go lower here because when you take a look at the chart of Bitcoin on a weekly basis you have the price action moving up and into the third standard deviation Bollinger Band where was the wick on the candlestick well above the 9,000 level so the probability of Bitcoin being rejected at that level was fairly high now I'm going to share over the weekend where I think that Bitcoin is going to pull back to for a great risk reward re-entry play using historical analysis on the weekend commentary. So check out my commentary over the weekend because I do plan on buying back in. What might else we want to go over here? Let's leave off with the euro to see where this currency strength. It's up this morning, but at stiff resistance. Watch for a break above the 1118 level on the euro. If we get a close above that level, uh, that might set the stage for a continuation breakout on the euro. I wouldn't get excited about a dollar breakdown until such time. And the reason why I'm focusing on the euro is that it's the largest counterparty currency within the basket of the DXY or the UUP. It makes up over 50% of that basket. Now, going back to where I would get excited about the euro breaking out to new higher highs is if we close above this resistance level here and i misspoke before a close above 1.118 i think i said 1.18 my apologies uh where we get more excited is a close above one spot one two and ideally a higher high and we do not have a higher low so the jury's out here I think we have far a bit more backing and filling to do here on the euro RSI is looking okay putting in higher lows and higher highs but I don't get all excited about RSI until we see confirmation of price and that is it for this morning folks everybody have a profitable trading day and I will talk to you over the weekend be well